Mr. Pradeep Kashyap onto the stage. Welcome, sir. Thank you, and, and good morning, everyone. I'm delighted to be here this morning. I'm going to be talking about creating, creating an endearing organization for which I'll be telling you the March story, an organization that I started. For the first 17 years of my working life, I worked with three large multinational companies in India. During that period, like most of us, I acquired a fair amount of material wealth and creature comforts. But the inner richness was missing in my life and a hollow feeling kept bothering me. It was around the same time I was fortunate that I met my spiritual guru. It was he who encouraged me to inquire into the purpose of life. So the year I turned 40, I decided with the blessings of my guru to voluntarily opt out of the corporate sector and devote my energies to working with the poor. In the initial years, as a consultant to some NGOs and the government, I got the opportunity to travel the length and breadth of this vast country and this great country where I experienced rural poverty firsthand. I have lived all my life in a city I had never seen that kind of poverty and that moved me. So I realized that I had to do something about it. So I decided to start a new kind of an organization which would help create large-scale livelihoods and employment for the poor. Having worked with large companies, I was well aware of the impersonal and selfish nature in these organizations. So I was determined that I was going to, that my organization would create a great sense of belonging and encourage self-giving amongst its employees. With this uh, objective, I uh, established MART in 1993 as an organization based on family values. Because what I realized was, by looking at different kinds of organizations in society, you have the government organization, you have the private sector, you have the NGO, uh, and then you also have marriage as an institution. And I realized that the only institution to which we continue to belong throughout our lives is the family. And that was the reason why I chose the family format for the organization. Now, in a family, we do not have any one fixed designation. I'm a husband, a father, a son, a brother, and much more. So at Mark II, we decided that we will not have any designations. So we are a flat and democratic organization. No one leaves his family is our shared belief, and we put this to practice. On completing 10 years in the organization, every employee automatically becomes a partner, a co-owner in the organization with shares gifted by the organization. We've already inducted eight partners through this process, and my dream is that in the next few years, we'll become a fully employee-owned organization. We're a team of 75 people. In the last five years, only five people have left us, of which three have rejoined, and the other two have expressed their desire to return. Against an industry average, of 7 to 8 percent dropout employees every year, our rate is not even 1 percent because only two people have left us in the last five years and this is largely because of the family values. In a close-knit family, we share all information with each other. We are transparent. At Mart, we have taken transparency to an extreme. Everybody, all the 75 people in the organization, know each other's salary. Any one of them can walk up to the accountant and ask anybody else's salary because we have to be a fair organization. Okay? Similarly, when anyone has a problem in the family, 
Don't we all reach out? This is what happens at Mart. This is Rajiv, who joined us two years back as a management trainee. Last month, his father, who was visiting him from Patna, suddenly developed chest pain. He was rushed to hospital, where he was diagnosed with two completely blocked arteries and required immediate stenting. The hospital admitted him and advised Rajiv to deposit two and a half lakh rupees by the evening. A distraught Rajiv came back to the office and broke down in front of his senior and said it was not possible for him to raise such a large sum of money at such short notice. By the evening, the amount had been collected from individual contributions by the employees and deposited with the hospital. The next morning, the surgery was conducted successfully. Raji's father returned to Patna from where he remitted the money, which was then uh, distributed and given back to the, uh, to the employees. I was away to Bangladesh when this happened. On my return, an emotionally charged Rajiv met me and said, how can I ever leave my Mart family? The role of the head of a family is much larger than the head of an organization. For example, almost everybody at Mart has joined straight out of college. We are a very young organization. The average age is around 30. I'm 64. And most of them have got married after joining Mart. And in several cases, the father-in-law-to-be met me first before meeting the boy's father because he wanted to ascertain the uh, career prospects of the groom in consideration. So that's the kind of a role you have to play as the family. This is one of our very important uh, team members, Pankaj, who worked with us for five years. And despite persistent efforts by his parents, he's an MBA, well qualified, despite persistent efforts by his parents, he was not able to find himself a suitable bride. The reasons for rejection were the boy is not in government service, he is not employed with a bank, he doesn't even work for a well-known private company, he works for a small unknown consultancy firm. What is this consultancy business anyway, they would ask. So, Pankaj decided to leave us. It was a very sad day for us. He went and joined an American agency and within a year found himself a lovely bride. Mission accomplished, he rejoined Mart. <laughs> and he is now the proud head of a happy family, Hamdo Hamare Do. At home, we don't consider any work as menial. We follow the same practice at Mart. When the cleaning person doesn't show up in the office, beers get down and scrub uh, toilets and they wash uh, utensils because these are family values. For this reason, we don't have any written or oral job descriptions because all of us are ready to roll up our pants and do whatever is required to be done in the organization. We, I'm sure by now many of you must be thinking that this is all very well for a small little organization to follow these uh, family values, but surely large corporations cannot uh, function with these uh, family values. In fact, uh, there will be chaos. Well, I worked for, for the Japanese and particularly Toyota. Toyota and many other Japanese firms follow the lifelong employment philosophy. And Toyota in particular pays for every employee's wedding reception because it believes that it is the head of the large Toyota family. In any case, there are not more than 5,000 large organizations in India which together account for less than 7% of our country's workforce. On the other hand, we have 40 million small and tiny units 
each employing an average of just five people. So if we can inculcate family values into these tiny organizations, we can hope to make 200 million employees and their families happy. And this would lead to a much happier nation. Let me now come to our vision, which contains our purpose. Our purpose is to help the poor improve their quality of life. As I had mentioned earlier, that the reason why I left the corporate sector was because I wanted to follow this purpose. So our purpose is central to whatever we do. Through this, we have shown that if you are passionate about a higher purpose, then even ordinary people like us from B-grade management institute, you can achieve extraordinary results. Our list of clients includes the best of best Fortune 500 companies, including Unilever, PNG, and many others. And on the other hand, in the development sector, we have clients like the World Bank and UN uh, organizations. So if you have that passion and that purpose, you can achieve extraordinary results. Let me now share some of the work that we've done in the last few years to give you a glimpse of the kind of work that we do. It was in this state, in Nalgonda, that we started a pilot with Unilever, which is called Project Shakti, where by now 50,000 women from very poor households have become dealers for Unilever brands, selling these in their own villages, and each of these women has doubled her family income. And this additional money is spent on better health care and education for the children. Similarly, we worked with 10,000 tribal women from 500 villages across six of the most backward districts of Odisha, including Kalahandi, Keonjar, uh, and we brought them into a collective marketing model. And last year, they have achieved a turnover of 9 crore rupees. And that has substantially increased their incomes. Let me now come back to our philosophy at MART. The, 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 the two people you can see shaking hands, if you notice carefully the two arms of the M, represents our commitment to teamwork and partnerships. We have partnerships with a large number of organizations across the world, including the US, Europe, and many other uh, countries. And the heads bent forward reflects our humility and respect for all. Let me now come to what kind of an organization our country needs now. For that, let us study the kinds of existing organizations which I have mapped on every organization has a mind, but it also has a heart. Yeah. So if you look at NGOs, NGOs have a lot of compassion in their heart, and they are the do-gooders of society, but often they do not bring strategic thinking to their work because of which the work doesn't get scaled up. On the other hand, you have the corporates who hire the best minds in the country, paying the best salaries, but often these people do not have compassion for the poor, and therefore they are not able to empathize with the problems of society. And then we have the government. I have worked extensively with the government. I was an advisor to the Ministry of Rural Development, and I was the chairman of the Khadi Commission Marketing Group. So I have worked very closely with the government, but with due apologies, I have to say that often the government brings the wrong kind of mind and the wrong kind of heart, and therefore is not able to create the right kind of impact. But fortunately, all this is changing in the last five, seven years. NGOs are now talking about bringing a business mind to their work, which means that they are moving into the fourth quadrant, which is the new generation organization. Corporates are talking about corporate social responsibility, green marketing, social marketing, 
by which they're also saying that we have a heart and they're also wanting to move into that same quadrant. And then we have the government which says that we now need to get our model the right side up and that's when we'll be able to make a difference. So today, the government is inducting a lot of people from the private sector, whether it's Arun Mayra or it's Nandan Nilekani and many other people because the government is now serious and wants to do, uh, bring about change, hopefully. So this is the kind of a new organization which will have a business mind and a social heart. The business mind is required for dealing with the complex problems of modern society. And the social heart will be required for empathize, empathizing with the poor. Okay. Let me now conclude with the characteristics of this kind of an organization. The first, of course, is that it will be based on family values, which I've already described a little while earlier. Because of these family values, we can hope to see employees more motivated, more productive, and therefore there will be longer retention. Today, the most serious problem that companies are facing is one of retention. We can bring family values into organizations and we can hope to retain employees much longer. Such an organization will realize that what is good for society is good for the organization. So profits will come from purpose and passion and not from exploitation. So therefore, these organizations will believe that if you have a higher purpose and you are passionate about that purpose, profits will follow automatically. And let me share here that MART was started in 1993 and we work only with the poor across the country and in neighboring countries, the SAC countries. We have been a profit-making organization from year one and con continue to be a profit-making organization. So it is possible to make profits even if you are working with the poor. The CEOs of these companies will maintain simple and modest lifestyles. Peter Drucker, the legendary management guru said, the difference between the salary of the CEO and the lowest paid should not be more than 20 times. In my case, it is only 15 times. During the global economic meltdown, there were many American CEOs whose salaries were 200 times of the lowest paid, which reflects the greed of our times. Fortunately, after that, there has been a lot of rethink, and I think society is realizing that these kind of... So we will have a new kind of leadership, we hope. These organizations will realize that essentially we are all one. So these organizations will believe in cooperating and not competing with each other. And they will share their knowledge more freely because they will realize that essentially knowledge does not belong to anybody. And that is a philosophy we have followed at MART. Our knowledge is available to anybody and everybody. And that has benefited us because there are more clients have come back to us because of that. And finally, these organizations will believe that to run companies or organizations, you need emotional intelligence, you need intuitive wisdom. So ultimately, such organizations will realize that we are human beings first and managers last. Thank you.